In the late 60s, a civil war took place in Colombia which would last for decades. In fact, we can still see the impact this war had on the Colombians' lives. Thousands of Colombians, including children, were left homeless and driven to live in the dangerous streets teeming with crime. These children had no parents or relatives to take care of them, and they were the perfect targets for someone with twisted desires such as Luis Garavito, world's deadliest serial killer, who was nicknamed the Beast due to the terrible nature of his crimes. Ironically, Luis Garavito himself was also a victim of this inhumane society. He had a rough childhood and decided to run away from home at an early age. He was sexually assaulted by a man who promised to offer him food and shelter, and this incident left him scarred. He soon realized that the only way to survive in the streets was to resort to crime, and he joined a rebellious gang that often robbed Colombian civilians for food and money. According to Garavito's friends, he was a kind and quiet man who treated his girlfriend and her child in a very respectful manner. However, never in a million years could they have guessed what he was actually doing behind closed doors. One would think that being subject to such a terrible childhood, Garavito would never wish the same thing to happen to his enemy. However, he did the exact opposite. Garavito violated and murdered homeless boys between the age of 6 and 16. He planned everything carefully and wore disguises to avoid drawing suspicion to himself. He pursued a different method of coercion depending on the target's age. If the child was younger, he'd promise him food or candy, and if the child was older, he'd offer employment. After successfully convincing the target to follow him, they'd walk together for a long time towards an unknown destination. Along the way, he'd engage in conversation with his victim to gain his trust. Once they walked for long enough, and once the victim was too tired to resist, he suddenly attacked the boy, bind his wrists together, and proceed to do unimaginable things. He was called the Beast for a reason. His victims were tortured and raped, and their throats were slashed. Some of the victims were also dismembered or decapitated. He went on with his life of crime for seven years, murdering over 100 victims with ease. No one ever noticed the missing boys, or bothered to report to the police. Garavido always committed his crimes carefully, making sure to leave no clue behind. However, after all these years, he'd become cocky. He didn't think the police would ever come after him, and started to get careless. In 1998, the police discovered several naked bodies of children on a hillside. A note was found near the crime scene with an address written on it, which belonged to none other than Garavito's girlfriend. When the police paid a visit there, they found a journal among Vito's belongings in which he described each of his crimes in great detail. A manhunt began for Garavito, which lasted for a year. A year later, police arrested a random man, who happened to be Garavito on suspicion of attempted rape, and took him in for interrogation. He quickly cracked under the pressure and confessed everything to the police. He even drew a detailed map to show the burial location of his victims to the police, and the police finally realized that this man was the beast that they'd been searching for an entire year. It was determined that Garavito killed anywhere from 150 to 400 boys. He was sentenced to 1,853 years in prison, but because he cooperated with the police and helped them find the victims' bodies, his sentence was reduced to 22 years, and he is scheduled to be released in 2021. According to his guards, Garavito is a relaxed and respectful prisoner. In fact, he is currently studying to be a politician and start a career in activism to help abuse children. What do you think? Do you think 22 years in prison changed Garavito for good? Or do you think his release from prison is a horrible mistake?